Welcome, punters. Uh, another episode of Tipster. I have Mick Gannon here to my right. Mick, how are you? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. We're in the thick of it, of course. Uh, it's the start of November, November 1. Uh, we just had the Cox Plate. Uh, we've, we've had Everest. We've got Golden Eagle next weekend, and of course, Derby Day. Then the Cup. Then Oaks. Then Stakes Day. It's just it's like Christmas. It's like Christmas Eve. Just like the uh, the eighth Christmas Eve or the eighth Grand Final uh, that we've had this spring, and I can't wait. It's going to be a massive, massive day down at Flemington, and uh, just not quite as big, but a nice day at Rose Hill as well. Yeah, no, it's all happening, and of course uh, the Fleming, Flemington Carnival's upon us. Yep. Um, Mick, your all-in show with the boys uh, was uh, posted on Monday. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, look at our channel and you'll catch Mick, uh, Mick's show there, All In. And they cover, obviously, uh, Derby Day. Yep, Derby um, Day. We cover Coolmore, Golden Eagle, uh, have a little bit of chat about the Melbourne Cup and a few other races as well. So make sure you do check it out. And, and that, uh, complete fill-up last week for well, the punters. That, that One of the 6.2 million that uh, chimed in last week. I was going to give you a rap, but yeah. you know you can play your own trumpet. That's okay. Yeah. Of course, Romantic Warrior was uh, a big focus of your show. Yes. Um, and look, hey, what a race! I mean, uh, look, personally, I was on Romantic Warrior. I was on Alligator Blood. I thought Alligator Blood was absolutely looking amazing on the turn. Yeah. Um, still did quite well in the straight. I mean, up against some, some great horses there. Mister Brightside surprised a few on the inside. But what about J Max effort to the line? I mean, he threw. He threw. The, the kitchen sink at it, he threw everything at it. Yep, the whole, the works burger. <laughs> I mean, let's just have a look here. Yeah, we've had some expletives here. I think we've got someone very happy backing up another win in the Cox Plate. This means so much. I've got so much faith in this horse and, oh my God, I thought I got beat. I know, I know you thought you got beat. That was uh, extreme emotion right there. And the camera didn't follow me. And I just went, oh, I can't say what I said, but... What sort of a feeling does it give you? Oh, I can't believe we won the Cox Plate. <laughs> well, you have. <laughs> it means so much. I've had so much to do with him. I've been singing his praises, how much he's improved. I needed to get a good run. And I felt I gave him the best possible run I can and could, I should say. And... Uh, Baby! We need some music out here. We need to celebrate. Where's the champagne? Jesus, I can't believe it. <laughs> well, we need to get you back there and celebrate. Well done. That was epic. I can't believe it. Yeah, huge win there from J-Mac. Um, yeah, what do you say? Anyhow, look, hey, uh, what about we talk about quickly about what else is coming up yep. uh, this weekend? Uh, I know you're travelling to Melbourne, but Saturday you'll be in Sydney? Yeah, Sydney's set on Saturday, 11.70am uh, a.m. Sydney, SEN tracks, so you'll be able to catch that. Yep. Uh, and then I have a big interview with Mark Hunter, which uh, I'll be doing tomorrow. So it'll be coming out uh, late Thursday afternoon. We'll be uh, touching on Derby Day. We we'll, might even get a cool more tip and obviously have a little chat to him about the Melbourne Cup and see what his thoughts are on maybe the uh, international radio. But more importantly, what I want to hear from Mark is his thoughts on the local gallopers and uh, which was Australia's best chance to win the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, so Mark Hunter, of course, had four winners last Saturday. So you'll catch that Mark Hunter interview on our YouTube channel. Just another reason to subscribe. So you'll get a bit of a notification when that comes through. We'll just go back, check uh, the channel, and look out for Mark Mark's interview with uh, with Mick Gannon here. So, hey, of course, we've got a tips to show here. Uh, that's huge. We look at the October winners, nice, bright and early this, this month. So you'll find out which tipsters, which media experts, uh, did the most damage to the bookies. So stay tuned. We'll tell you how to get their tips and all that sort of great stuff. And we'll obviously finish off with some free tips from those who did really, really well in October. Yeah, a couple of names on that wall there, a couple of uh, mates of mine. Uh, really keen to see what they've got the tip this week. So uh, that'll be great. And uh, mix more at the end as well. So mix more at the make end. sure you're tuning in. Tips of the month overall for October and what a month it was for a couple of people at the top there, namely Formulator. A, uh, Gentlemen, we see plenty of profit on turnover, 202%. Well, knock me over with a feather. Yeah, no, look, good. But before I get into formula, wow. I just want to make another note quickly, Mick. We've got uh, top five spots. So this is everybody, including hundreds and hundreds of media experts. Yeah. And they're all they're all punters. Yeah. They're all punters. There you well. go. And look, um, they deserve these pro symbols and no, no more than formulators. So formulators has been tipping at the site since 2011. 
Um, he is a lifetime profit maker. Remember, he's getting starting prices. Yep. You do a lot better on fixed odds. He's a gun. Um, yep. he, has a, he has a formula. Uh, we don't know what it is. He just puts the tips in that come out of that, and it works. Now, yep. if you're following Formulator, uh, look, you, generally, if you look at his history, you've, you've got to be in it for the long term because you know, he, he, the $20 average that uh, this month, that's sort of around where he's finding them. But you know, Mickey, like if you're tipping yep. just $20 pops all the time, roughly. You might you might have a run of 50, 50 hours and then you might get four in a row. So exactly. that's the game you play. Exactly. But uh, Formula is definitely one to follow if you're looking for some value. In second there, Baz, one, two, two. Yeah, this guy tips all over the country. He's looking for a bit of value too. He's around that $20 mark as well. And he tipped uh, a couple of long shots around 60 bucks, uh, you know, 25 bucks. So again, it's probably a similar sort of a story. Yep. Um, he's tipping around the 172% pop. I mean, these profit on turnovers, pop means profit on turnover. They, they're ridiculous. Like some people don't know actually what that means. Remember, a bookie's oh, it's, probably it's happy just, if it's doing 12% pop. Let's just keep pop. it simple, it's insane. It's insane. So if <laughs> you're, insane. If you're in double figures, that's ridiculous. If you're in triple figures, that's super ridiculous. Yeah, so incredible go, stuff. go to the site, look up all these guys and yep. follow them. You, you know, they're, they're definitely doing well. The very definition of low flying in third, I'm gonna go with Bob Yaka or Bobby Yaka. We'll just go with Bob Yaka. Yeah. 117 percent profit on turnover 62 uh, tips which is enormous strike rate of 19 but you're getting at 11 dollars 20 uh average price yeah look another guy too if you're following this guy in october you're doing well um 100 bucks would have in your betting uh, account he'd have turned that into over seven thousand dollars that's great money uh, you know 11 winners through the month and, and one of those was gold trip at the 30 buck price too so have to be happy with that definitely one to follow bobby acker and he's a man in fourth. We suggested punters, but he spent plenty of time in the media. Rick Morris, 103% profit on turnover. Up you go, my man. Rick Morris also bowls a mean wrong. Yeah, he does, apparently. I mean, Rick... Rick's, Self-confessed. We, we, we've met Rick plenty of times. I mean, I know you've met with Rick more than I have. And uh, look, his racing knowledge just oozes out of him when you yep. talk to him. So it's no surprise to see Rick here. And look, whilst he, um, you know, he's on the leaderboard this week in the top five, he's there, off and thereabouts. Yeah, he's right and that's there. why he's got the pro symbol near him. Yep. So absolutely a gun tipster. He tips in Queensland, but he's a Melbourneian and, and certainly has knowledge about... Um, uh, about Victorian racing as well. So look out for Rick Morris, uh, certainly in the know. Yep, some impressive stuff there from old Ricky boy. And in fifth, uh, seventh seal. Well, well, wait, eighty-four percent profit on turnover. What a name! Yeah, look, this is a guy who sort of crept into the to, to our sites, but certainly doing some great stuff. Yep. Um, you know, uh, he's uh, plenty of winners over around the ten buck mark. Uh, again, eighty-four percent pots, the bottom of the top five. It's it's insane. <laughs> like it's real. These numbers are just out of this world. So he's definitely one to follow. Um, yeah, look, you could do a, a lot worse. Again, look at his streak, uh, his stake, his, his, sorry, his strike rate is around that 10% mark, uh, 18 bucks. So you've got to be uh, realizing Patient. that he is a value hunter. Uh, you won't get a winner every race. Um, you might get him for a while, but on history, uh, he's finding him a, a nice price. Yep, that's super. And that is the top five for tips of the month overall for October. Tips of the month media for October. And on top, Mitchell Hammond and Mitchie from the Daily Telegraph, 83% profit on turnover. You have absolutely dominated yeah, full props because that's some super tipping. Yeah, and look, for a, for a media tips, a, very rare to see that average price around the nine buck mark. So, Love that. Uh, heaps of courage here. Remember, I mean, Mick, like seriously, if I said to you, right, from now on, you've got to put your tips in, you know, 48, 72 hours before they jump, what would you say? That's pretty much what I do. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> I knew that, didn't I? But tough gig, right? It's because a tough there's gig. so much information you don't have. It is hard. Um, so well, we do the we do the weekend preview on a Thursday. Yeah. And you know, you Well, all in for example. Yeah, but, all that, in. but that's a different product. That's again. an all in's on a Monday, but that's yeah. a different product. But yeah, that even the Thursday preview for a Saturday, yeah. you're doing a form on a Wednesday. So it is hard, and Mitch is doing exactly the same thing, and to produce an 83% profit on turnover is fantastic. It's, it's super, outstanding. Super and look, he's often thereabouts as well, Mitch. Yep. And I think that the other challenge is just what information's available at that time too. Yeah, you're not getting other people's opinions and while people 
you don't necessarily use those, let's face it, you know, you hear someone else, you might pick up a, a little bit of info from that. And yeah, so I think forth. you can so, also frame your opinions based on what the track's going to do and what the weather's going to do. It's probably the, the two leading pieces of information which you don't quite have at your disposal yet there we go. on a Wednesday or a Thursday. In second there, Chris uh, Venusio. Yeah, he's yeah. from uh, he's from Herald Sun, yep. also the Super Racing stable, and uh, look, he's he's got a similar challenge. So, uh, all power to, to Chris. Yep, up you go, Chris. Paul Lally from RaceNet, seventy eight percent profit on turnover, and Ben Asagari from uh, .com there, forty three percent profit on turnover as well. Not yeah. too bad. And there my man in fifth, Mitchy Lewis. Up you go, Mitchy, forty one percent profit on turnover. Mitch does great work. I think he's, he's uh, South Australia and Victoria predominantly. But he jumps yeah. on the weekend preview um, on, on Thursdays with myself and Dean Watling, and uh, he straightens the ship a little bit, which is good. What does that mean? Oh, well, well, you know, sometimes, we sometimes we lose our man Dino, and uh, we just got to bring him back. But Mitchy does a fine <laughs> job of that. And, uh, no, Mitchy Lewis is a gun. He's a, he's a cool, former Dino. on the rise, yeah. and I think we'll continue to see results uh, like this from Mitchy. Good stuff. You well. know, he actually tipped the, the winner. The, the horse is about 15 years of age. The horse won the Geelong Cup. He found it at 30 something dollars. So yeah, that's a joke. That's tough to cheek. It's only 10. That um, ten-year-old. That uh, yeah, Mitchy. So he finds winners at good value. Not just the uh, not just the average price of Wells, but you can find them uh, deeper. Good on you, Mitch. Well done, and, all, and well done to all five. Uh, remember to come to the site, check them out, and uh, uh, get a tip alert and find out when their tips drop. Okay, punters, we're at that uh, part of the program where you get free horse racing tips for this Saturday's racing. And hey, uh, because it's so early, uh, you're getting it exclusive uh, right here. So listen in, uh, because we've got the sharpshooters, a few of them we spoke to on the leaderboard, and one of those, of course, is Mitch Lewis from SEN. Uh, his early mail is coming at you now. G'day guys, it's Mitch Lewis here. Thanks to the great tip-off boys for inviting me on to come on and introduce myself. So I'm a form analyst who concentrates on South Australian racing and Victorian racing. Uh, I run a web page called formguidebreakdowns.com. You'll find all of my analysis up there for all of your South Australian meetings as well as your Metro Victorian meetings. I also do a little bit of form on Gareth Hall's Giddy Up show, so all my Victorian midweek tips, you can find them at um, SEN's web pages or on their podcasts. So when I'm doing the form, I use a lot of punting form. I'm quite a logical thinker, so what I like to do is I like to get things like sectional times and um, ratings and put them all together and sort of plot out a race, how I expect that race is going to be run, and then versus what you'll expect from the track. So if we've got a leader bias track, I'll go through and I'll plot out the race, I'll do my maps, and then I'll compare that to what I'm expecting for the day. So I concentrate a lot on using those maps just to see if I can envision how the race is gonna be run and make my decisions from there. So I've got two best bets for you this week. I'm gonna have one at Morpherville. Not a lot of meat on the bone, but I think it should be winning. Race five, number two, Sharippa. I was keen to see this horse after its first up run um, one first up, so if it improves off that, it should be very hard to beat. And then at Flemington, race nine, number five, Tamerlane. Run a really good race, second up here at Flemington. I think he can improve off of that, and if he runs up to the figures he produced that day at Flemington, I think he'll be hard to beat here. Thanks for having me. Good luck if you're having a bet this weekend. Your next uh, free tip, Damo, this one I'm excited about, Jack Dickens. Doing some fine work down there with the early crow and our mate uh, Tom Papley, the small forward from Sydney Swans. And uh, Dicko, well, he's absolutely dominating. Six winners he uh, he backed last week at the Valley, so he's in fine form. Yeah, exactly. Let's see what he's got for a, uh, a big derby day ahead at Flemington. G'day, I'm Jack Dickens, and this is how I do form. Uh, I kick off uh, each and every meeting. I work through meetings, not through sort of races. So I start uh, for Flemington this Saturday. I start with speed maps. So I go through and I, I map each and every race. So there's nine races there for derby day. I go through and I map them all. Uh, on my punting form, so I use puntingform.com that I use on a sectional database where I can add my notes for uh, races and meetings um, everywhere and every, everything that I oversee, I put into there and I can overlay that with the actual data that they provide. Uh, once we've got our speed maps done, um, then we, I uh, go about sort of uh, sucking the bits of data from punting form out that I like uh, to start forming my own markets. Um, I have a, a team that help me um, 
price and bet, fine bets. Um, then I send off the sort of guts of what I've built uh, to my man, Lindsay, who then does all the trials and uh, little bits of pearls he looks for when he's doing form. And Will, a uh, young bloke who does note taking as well. And we're just looking for horses that were suited or not suited last start. Uh, jockey switches, SP profile sort of stuff. So that's a starting price. So it's like the collective intelligence of the betting world saying the likely chance of this horse winning a race. So not sort of so much what happened, but what the market thought would have happened. Um, then they send that back and then I sort of clean that up and go from there and start making decisions. On Saturday at Flemington in race six, which is the Coolmore stud stakes down the straight, I think number 11, so it's Flemington, race six, Number 11, Osmosis, is a phenomenal price. He's got an SP edge versus key rivals here. He maps to make his own luck up on speed. Um, Newgate, don't muck around. I think he'll be a, a big player at a huge price. Have a great weekend. All right, I hope you're ready for some more free racing tips for this Saturday. Uh, we've now got uh, some of the sharpshooters that we spoke to and some we didn't who have got free tips. Listen in. Hi racing enthusiasts, it's Rick Morris here for the great tip-off and it's spring carnival time at Flemington and that's where I'm looking for for my best bet for Saturday, Derby Day and it'll be in the rising fast stakes at uh, Group 3 level. I'm liking uh, race four, number two, Chain of Lightning who um, ran great first up, was third behind as Fura who um, is in great form at the moment, and also Uncommon James, who's a good galloper at that level. So I, I think that's a good form line. Prior to the spell, she'd run five Group 1 races in a row, and one of those was behind Think About It in the Stradbroke over 1,400, and Think About It came out and won the Everest recently, so you couldn't get a better form line than that. So I like... Uh, race four, number two, Chain of Lightning, currently $8, so I'd get on early and she'll enjoy the Flemington Strait again where she's won down the straight and she'll be coming home hard over the top. So looks great each way value. I'll, I'll even back her straight out. So um, that's uh, the confidence with the bet. And for the great tip-off followers, um, they'd know at the moment that I am unstoppable. So um, currently $12 in the Coolmore. So we'll go for further value uh, with I Am Unstoppable. Thanks. Happy punning. All right, punters, we come to that bit uh, where we get mixed moral and a few other bips and bops. Don't go away because there's some interesting stuff coming. Firstly, uh, Mick, take the punters through what's on the YouTube channel and what they're going to look forward to. Yep, so uh, on Friday, you'll catch a chat uh, with myself and Mark Hunter. We'll be doing our preview of the Derby. Might even get a, a cool more tip and uh, have a look at the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. See what he likes there. So that'll be really, really good to see there. And then uh, late Sunday night, myself, Lewis Willoughby and Dean Watling will be filming a all-in show. That'll be up first thing on Monday morning. We'll be covering the Melbourne Cup, the Oaks, and a huge um, Champions Day down there, Stakes Day at Flemington for that Saturday. So that'll be a massive edition of all-in. We'll probably even break that into three parts. So make sure you are subscribing, because if you are subscribing, you get a notification of when it lands, and then you won't have to uh, look through the socials. You'll just be able to go straight to uh, YouTube, and away you go. Um, mate, do you want a moral? I do want a moral, but before that too, we've got the All In Show from Monday that of course covers this Saturday's Derby Day yep. and Golden Eagle. So look out for that. That's live right now. It is, and All if right. you've missed that, well, whew, you're just missing out on a few winners, no doubt. Righto, my moral, I'm going to make this one, uh, well, an each way moral, a one by four moral. Don Corleone in the Coolmore, you're getting around $36 and $9 a place. I think he's going to run a huge race here. He's screaming out 1,200 metres, Flemington. He's rock hard fit, ready to go. Draws barrier three, gets Opie Boss in the Kiwi. He's in good form. So I think we're going to have a big side of big odds there to at least fill a hole. We might even be right in the finish late. How does that sound? Sounds good. Jeez, like that? that's, a, that's a different mixed moral. It sounds great. Yeah, right. um, it's, an, it's an each way value moral. Yeah, like it. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, what else to talk about? Do you uh, want a tip for the Golden Eagle? Oh, Golden Eagle. Yeah, why not? Give well, us my one. mate Luke wanted a tip for the Golden Eagle. Did Luke Hovanessian. So, well, Luke, if you're sitting back does watching... Does he want mate, the tip or does he want you to give the tip no, on there? Th probably both. I'd suggest <laughs> so you can get the early mail and get on. I think Hawaii Five O is going to be really hard to beat. He's had a really great platform. They're ready to go. They tell me that this is a race he's been aimed for all along. 
be interesting to see. Draws really well. I'm also really keen to see in the Golden Eagle, Amelia's Jewel, and how well she goes with the blinkers yeah. on. They've both drawn really, really well. Now, if you want some insight, make sure you are listening to the Sydney set because we will yeah, have okay. uh, Simon Miller on and we'll be chatting to him all oh, things great. Amelia's Good Jewel as well. Good guy. So uh, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a super Saturday. But they're the two plays for me: Hawaii Five O and uh, Don Julion. There we go. Mick Gannon's uh, insights for Golden Eagle and of course uh, he's mixed moral as well. And look, Mick could only hope that they go as well as this little number at Mooney Valley. Just, just see the pony race. Couldn't believe it. I marked it $29 and um, <laughs> yeah, just somehow, <laughs> the, somehow got the job done. It's, it's like, look how it's going. I mean, it's probably going better than... Um, uh, you know, some of the Cox Plate uh, top place getters well, were going there. I mean, I'd suggest the post race nice. swab there because <laughs> on those first two, because there's something going on back in the field. They just not, they just don't have any turn of foot whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Thought, oh, I lost the well, cap. That's, the a, yeah, that's a bit yeah, of bad luck. Yeah. Uh, that's good. That's super stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, geez, running. I can sub 11s there. Yeah, yeah, that's so some, there we go. That's a pretty good effort. Up you go. I love this stuff. I think that's really good for racing. It's good to see the uh, youngsters getting out and about and uh, doing their thing because they're the next generation. We need more of that. Absolutely. So there we go, punters. Another episode of Tipster. Remember to come to the greattipoff.com for your tips during spring and any time, really. It's the only place where you get free tips. Uh, you get tips from pro punters verified uh, with all their tips um, verified and certified and you will see their profit on the page. All the pub discussions, Mick, who's the best tip start? We answer them. Yep, uh, we absolutely. answer, we answer that, that question. Greattipoff.com, search bar, away you go. And remember to subscribe to this show so you know when all the shows drop. Other than that, punters, have a great Flemington Spring Carnival, great Golden Eagle Day, and we'll see you in, no, in December. Yep. Bye for now. Bye for now.